Next big topic, telescope size. And we'll probably get halfway through this here in the last 10 minutes. Telescope size. Astronomers historically have built bigger and bigger and bigger telescopes. There are two primary reasons for doing this. The first one is kind of intuitive, light gathering power. The bigger the telescope is, the more light you collect in the same amount of time. The more light you have, the easier it is to see faint things. The light gathering power, and we'll talk about this one today, and the other one that we'll save is resolving power, which is basically how much your image is blurred out. If there's a fraction off the edges of any mirror that blurs out your image. But the bigger the telescope is, the less blurred it is. We'll save that one. Let's talk about light gathering power. So here we have an example. I'll kill the lights here. Uh, two pictures of Andromeda. The Andromeda galaxy, our sister galaxy, the nearest big galaxy to us. And both are taken in the same exposure time. I don't know what it was, maybe a minute or a second, I don't know, some exposure time. But on different telescopes, where the telescope on the right has twice the collecting area. The area of the mirror is twice as big as the area of the mirror that took this picture. And so you can see the same amount of time with more collecting area, you get more light, and so you can start to see the faint outskirts of the Andromeda galaxy. That's the basic idea. So let me ask you some questions about collecting area. Light gathering power is all about collecting area. Suppose I have a 5 meter telescope and a 1 meter telescope. In the same amount of time, how much more light do you collect with the 5 meter telescope? A lot of people said 5. 25, that's right. Area of a circle is pi r squared. Now often we talk about telescope size and diameters, not radii. And so we'll just substitute in there, capital R for radius. Radius is diameter over 2. So area is you know, some number pi over 4 times d squared. You don't have to worry about that. The point is area is proportional to the diameter squared. You double the size of your telescope, you have four times as much collecting area. Again, ratio is strong. You don't even have to do ratios anymore. Three times, if the telescope is three times as big, you have how much more area? Nine. So some of you said 25, because if it's five times big, five squared, 25 times more collecting area. And so, in the same amount of time, you can get 25 times more light in a five meter telescope like the Hale than with a one meter telescope. There's two ways to use a large telescope. That's one of them, to see things fainter than has ever been seen before. The other way is to look at the same objects that you look at with a one meter. Suppose you're studying some relatively bright stars. Not all cutting edge science is faint stuff. There's still a lot to be learned from objects that are relatively bright. I could do that same science in 1 25th the time on a five meter telescope. Like the Hale telescope, that's a five meter telescope. So if I have a one meter telescope, I'm cranking out science, if all of a sudden I go to the Hale telescope, I can crank out 25 times as much of the same type of science, or I can try to do new science looking at fainter things. So it can be used either way. So let me show you some large telescopes. This is Mauna Kea. It's one of the best places to have telescopes in the world. It's in Hawaii, large mountain. It's at about 14,000 feet, 30% less oxygen up there. It's kind of interesting. If you want to see the stars, don't go up on Mauna Kea. Because you get to the top of the mountain, and your brain is not receiving enough oxygen for your eyes to function properly. The stars actually look blurrier at the top of the mountain to the human eye. But it's great for CCDs. I mean, why would we want to put telescopes so high up? What's the idea? Less atmosphere. As we'll learn, the atmosphere messes up our images. So astronomers are always trying to find very high locations, not like Everest, it would be too expensive to work there, but high enough that we can work without too many people passing out. You always go up in teams. Oh yeah, you have to wear an oxygen monitor. Most of the observations done from a station halfway down the mountain through computer control. 
the internet off of Hawaii back to mainland is not that good. So you still get to go to Hawaii to use the telescopes, but they leave it kind of at the base of the mountain or halfway up. But some people actually go to the top and work up there. You have to work in teams. You have to have an oxygen monitor. And there's case after case after case. Some people adapt quickly and can do it, and some people just pass out and they have to bring the ambulance up before they die. Anyway, <laughs> the biggest two telescopes right now are the Keck telescopes. Again, it's a Caltech operation. They got tired of the Hale telescope, and they still use it, but they replaced it with two 10-meter telescopes, Keck 1 and Keck 2, uh, built in the early 80s and 90s. There are also other big telescopes up here. Subaru is a Japanese effort, 8-meter. Gemini is the U.S. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but there are three major astronomical entities in the world. You have the Europeans, the Americans, and the Californians. <laughs> Between Caltech and the University of California system, they have more telescopes than the Americans um, put together. So the Cats are Californian astronomy. Gemini North is an example of American astronomy. It's shared internationally as well. You got up and coming Japanese programs and smaller telescopes. And in time, those smaller telescopes will be replaced with bigger telescopes. Back in the 70s, astronomers were not very sensitive to the fact that this is a sacred native Hawaiian site. And so it ended up in decades of court battles. And the final ruling is if we want to build more telescopes, we have to tear down existing ones. So. You're just going to see bigger and bigger telescopes there, but not more and more telescopes. The little ones will be torn down, and the big ones will replace them. We're a lot more sensitive to those kinds of things now than we used to be. And here's the European astronomy example. These are not on Mauna Kea. These are in the Chilean Andes. There are a number of good observatories in the Chilean Andes. Prompt is at one of them. These are the very large telescopes, VLTs. That's what they're called. Astronomers are not very creative with their acronyms, not always. And there are four of them, four eight meters, and they can actually work together as a single telescope that's effectively 16 meters. So they're either four eight meters or the largest optical telescope on Earth, depending upon how they work together.